All right, y'all, so in this video, I wanted to really, really dive into the topic that I promised you all I would look into, which is what happens to your funds when an exchange shuts down. Because after we we pretty much dug into BitForex and we saw that they weren't a registered exchange, which basically means that they were doing what they were doing illegally, the, the next logical question is, what about everyone's money who was on that exchange? And the answer is not looking good. I'm gonna give you all my opinion Based on the stuff that we're seeing here, I'm gonna show you all the consistent theme that I'm seeing said, which leads me to believe what I believe, which is not very good. And then we'll talk a little bit about next steps, your approaches and stuff like that, because what's most important in situations like this is is you, your mental health, because it, it's hard, it hurts. It's like taking a hit like this, especially when you didn't even do nothing wrong. It's not even like, it's not guaranteed you believed in the wrong project or anything. It's just, this is a situation that's just out of your control because you trusted an exchange that didn't deserve your trust. I know that in the crypto space, everyone says, get a hard wallet, protect your crypto, keep control of your assets. And I get it, man. But what, what, people, what those people don't understand about this space is that the majority of people investing in these spaces, they're not trying to own their crypto they're trying to profit from it majority of the people don't care about actual ownership actual control and don't even want that responsibility most people who will be in this web3 space will 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 prefer centralization they're going to prefer someone else taking care of these problems what you're doing we have a culture and a world that's moving into you actually not doing something your things yourself and letting other people do it for you so the crypto purists don't get the fact that People don't want control of their own assets. They want someone else to control them, but they want to know that they can trust who is controlling them. That's it. So we're early on in the life of crypto. I will say this. We're so early into crypto, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself. Like, I get it. No, The world is lazy. We all want to be lazy, but... We're, this is a new opportunity that's so early you can't afford to be lazy right now. So yeah, it, worst case scenario, I think that this is just gonna have to be an L for a lot of people and you're gonna have to get your mind back. You're gonna have to recover. You're gonna have to, you know, jump back on a horse. <laughs> Hopefully people didn't lose too, too much, man, but let, let's just jump into what's been said here. So I'm seeing articles and we're going to scan through it. I'm not going to sit here and read a whole bunch of articles for you all. You all can do your own research when it comes down to that. I'm not a financial advisor, by the way. This is just my my conclusions and my assessment of what happened. If you didn't see my last videos about BitForex, be sure to check those out so you can have context as to what we're going over right now. But this is going to be focused on what happens to your crypto after something like this happens. So... Traders hoping to recoup their funds from failed cryptocurrency exchanges anytime soon are likely to end up disappointed, legal experts tell CNBC. You're likely to end up disappointed from failed um, from investing in failed crypto exchanges. Crypto trading and lending firms Celsius and Voyager Digital filed for bankruptcy this month, leaving you... Now, see, this wasn't a bankruptcy case. So I know that that's going to give people a little bit of hope, but I mean, this is a... The particular case here is that they should have never been doing what they were doing anyway. So it's even worse than filing for bankruptcy because it seems like Celsius and Voyager probably was legitimate and then things went bad. This wasn't ever even legitimate, really. You know, this wasn't ever really legal. So this is a situation where the company should have never existed. There's no one, there's no one out here regulating companies that don't, that's not supposed to exist, you know? So essentially that's the situation that we're in. What they're saying is um, cryptocurrencies aren't, aren't regulated, meaning they don't offer people the same protections they would get with their money held in a bank or shares in a brokerage firm. For example, the US Securities Investor Protection Corporation insures traders up to 500,000 in cash and securities if member broker runs into financial difficulties. Um, let's see. There are similar schemes in place with no laws governing crypto assets. Okay, right here. With no laws governing crypto assets, there's no guarantee investors would be able to recoup their funds if an exchange were to freeze someone's account or worse yet, completely collapse. So there's, like I said, there's no one whose whose job it is to make sure people get their money out. Um, 
So let's see. For now, it's still not entirely clear. While there are examples of crypto firms filing for bankruptcy overseas, basically what people are saying, what, what I'm seeing as a trend is it's up to the discretion of the exchange. It's up to the discretion of the exchange. So this is one article. This is one article from CNBC. Another article, what happens to your funds if a crypto exchange like FTX collapses? Let's scan through this one real quick. We're not gonna be reading all of this, but we just gonna scan through it. Um, cryptocurrencies are not federally protected or regulated in the same way that funds in your deposit account may be guarded in the event that your bank or credit union fails. Um, basically, for each account ownership category, the government does not step in and help investors recoup any funds they put into a cryptocurrency exchange. The government will not step in and help. Um, what happens to your funds in the event of bankruptcy is ultimately up to your individual exchanges. Different exchanges have different rules about what would happen to their customers' funds in the event of bankruptcy. With some exchanges listing in their terms, the funds may not be recoverable. Now, this isn't even that. This, this isn't that. They're, they're, they talk a lot about bankruptcy, but this exchange just ghosted and, and went ghost. So check this out. This is some some articles on Quora. Quora. Um, what happens to cryptocurrency that's left in exchange when exchange closes? Some cases, exchanges may provide advance notice of its closure. Bitforex didn't do that. They didn't provide um, advanced. Um, they didn't provide advance no notice. Um, if users withdraw cryptocurrency in time, they retain control of their assets and can transfer them to other wallets or exchanges. Um, if the exchange files a bankruptcy, they didn't do that. Asset seizure, lost access to funds. Unfortunately, in some cases, users may lose access to their cryptocurrencies if they fail to withdraw them before the exchange closes. The exchange is already closed. So you, they can't really open the exchange back up illegally once again, just to pay people their money. So, and how else would people get their funds? Like, like what, you know, this, this is the part that, that this is the part that sucks. So, um, as you can see, this, they're all basically saying it's up to the discretion of the exchanges. What happens to users assets? They went ghost from the internet. They went ghost from Twitter, they stopped speaking, posting, and stuff like this. They haven't responded to anything. They, they're not saying anything at all. So, and then the, the Bit4X is just gone. Bit4X is just gone. Bit4X, yeah, Bit4X is just gone. So the website is just gone. They haven't really said anything at this point in time, it leads me to believe that if they were gonna create some type of ramp for the users and stuff like that, there would have been legitimate announcements letting people know something big was coming. They would have said something's coming. If you wanna get your cash out, you need to get it out by this date. I believe the date is um, March 31st, I believe, or it's something like that. It's sometime late March where they had to close, like this legally, and. In Japan, this has to be closed down by then. It has to be closed down by then. They have, I think, damn near a whole month to close it down. Or was it the 24th? They, they basically have a month to close it down, but they chose to just go ghost and say nothing else. That's it. So who would take on the responsibility of going to this exchange, going through all their data, trying to send money back to the correct people in the correct wallets and stuff like that? Who would take up that responsibility? Where are the funds even at right now? Like who's in control of the wallets? Who's in control of the assets? Is that something that the government would seize and, and send back to people? Like, does that even happen? It's, it's so many questions and, and all of it just seems very unlikely. It seems like, yeah, it seems like those assets are best case scenario gone and locked away forever. But worst case, you know, somebody out here balling with your with your assets, um, which yeah, um, so yeah, I mean, it if they were going to do the right thing, they would have approached they would have approached this in a more professional way. That that's what it comes down. That's what I, that's what I'm getting from this. Every everything that I've read says that. You know, they they create these ramps for you to get your assets. They they warn you in advance. You have a certain amount of time to get your assets off the platform. 
there's warnings. There's, you know, there's the company working with their with their um, customers to to make sure they get everything that they they need back. Bitforex just went ghost. That's not that's not the sign. First off, they're unregistered. That's not the sign of somebody who want to do something the right way anyway. That by itself is just not the sign of somebody trying to do this the right way. So that was the first red flag. Then they went ghost and stopped responding on Twitter. The website's just gone down and, and everyone's been blocked. Yeah. All, everything is pointing to the fact that if you had funds in this exchange, you're not getting it back. That's the long and short of it. Um, so moving forward, what I would personally do is just chalk this up to an L. Um, I didn't have any fun. Well, I had funds on Bitforex, but it was like it was like remnants of old transactions or affiliate stuff. It's like it was nothing too important to me. Um, so I'm sorry for everyone who did have a, a significant amount of money on these exchanges. I know it sucks. I know it hurts. Um, I know it's not fair, but you have to keep control of your assets. It's too early on to be trusting trusting this like you would trust maybe robin hood or something it's way too early on um it's a lot of it's a lot of companies that exist right now that won't exist 10 years from now so keep that in mind be vigilant be wise uh you know make make decisions that leaves you in control of your assets because this is not this is not an established space where you can trust every company that you get attached to or that you're forced to use in this case I believe that Vivi does need to own some blame here, but I mean, the fact that Vivi only put us on shitty exchanges, that's, yeah, that's a fact, but you, if we still chose to use those exchanges because we accepted that it was worth the risk because of the value that we think is gonna be associated with the token. That's on us. So at the end of the day, all we can do as investors or yeah, all we can do is improve, get better. Which means now we know this is why we need to protect our own assets. But yeah, that's where we're going to end it. This is what happens to assets in these situations. Like everything that I have read so far, it all points to the exchange is, is going to be responsible for getting those assets back to you. And the, if the exchange just vanishes and does things in a sketchy way, they're probably not going to be setting up something so you can get your money back. So I think that it's safe for the community to chalk it up to an L. I think that people should start moving it as if it's an L already. And if something magical happens, it's a blessing. But as it stands, I would just chalk it up to an L and maneuver and, mo and move in the way where, you know, you, you accept what you would do worst case scenario. Ex believe in the worst case scenario. And if the positive happens, that's going to be amazing. But prepare for the worst. Be prepared for the worst and accept the worst is, is what I would say, is what I would do at this point in time. So let me know what y'all think, man. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up. Get the video spread out there and all that stuff, man. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to stay updated with everything going on. And I will definitely catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.